everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to be working on the Connect the Dots dishcloth. This is a really pretty and super summery looking dishcloth that you could really customize however you like, and we're going to be going through each part together. This dishcloth is part of our Crochet Along series this summer, the Summer of Dishcloths, where every week in July and August, I'm sharing a new dishcloth pattern, and this is our latest one. This is a super easy to stitch up granny square, a classic granny square, and then we've added some polka dots to it. So I have a large polka dot, a medium polka dot, and a small polka dot. So we're going to go through the construction of the square together, how to make a solid color granny square, which is slightly different than a multicolor granny square. We're also going to go through each dot individually each size and learn how to make each one and finally at the end of the video we're going to sew it all together we're going to stitch each one of these onto our dishcloth and do all the finish work so the finished dishcloth now it's very customizable you can make your granny square really as large or small as you'd like it to be but mine came out to be about nine inches by nine inches so it's a really nice dishcloth to hold in the hand. If you like an oversized dishcloth, you could just simply work more rounds of the granny square. But this came out to be nine by nine. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors. You'll need a tapestry needle. A ruler or tape measure is super helpful to get that size that you need. You're also going to need a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook. Now, if you've joined us for our other dishcloths, you'll notice that we're using the same size for all of them, and that is the recommended hook size for this yarn as well. So let's talk about the yarn. We're going to be using a yarn called Scrubby Smoothie by Red Heart. Now, this is what we've been using for our other dishcloths as well, so you may recognize it. We're not going to be using every last bit of this yarn. We're just going to be using some of it, but we are using it in our other dishcloths, so you'll be able to use it there. You can probably get a couple dishcloths out of the yarn here. Now, we're going to be making the main part of our square in this aqua color, and then we're going to be making some fun polka dots with the bright orange and the lemony. Now, feel free to mix up the colors however you like. You could do the main square in a different color, etc. Um, or completely different colors and it is fun to see what you all choose so keep sharing those photos I love seeing them so let's get started okay so we're gonna learn how to make the granny square portion first and then later on in the video we're gonna learn how to make all these fun polka dots now I went ahead at the beginning of the video we talk about aqua yellow and orange but I had this pink kind of sitting nearby and it looked really cute. So I did add some pink dots too. So as a side note, if you want to do that as well, I know I didn't mention the pink at the beginning of the video. So what we want to do is start off with our granny square. Now on fiber flux, we make lots of granny squares together, but in case you've never made a granny square, this is a dishcloth is the perfect way to start. So what you want to do is wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. We're going to put a slip knot on our hook, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. Now let's zoom in here, and we're gonna chain four. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. Now we're gonna join in the farthest chain from the hook to create our loop, okay? So bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, and you can kind of open that ring up a little bit. So what we're going to do first is chain three for round one. So one, two, and three. Then we're going to work a double crochet into the center of the ring. Now, as a side note, I'm holding my tail along the edge as I work. That will weave that in as we go along. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the center of the ring, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring through the last two loops, then we're going to work another double crochet in the center of the ring. And then we're going to chain one. Still holding that tail. Then work three more double crochets. One. Two. And three chain one, 
holding that tail still. If you need to push some stitches over, feel free. And work three more double crochets. One, two, and three. And we're going to chain one. So, so far we have three groups of double crochets separated by chain one. So then we're going to do three more double crochet. One, two, and three. Then we're going to chain one, and then we're going to join with a slip stitch to close the round. So one, two, three chains up, insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Now this time you can sort of straighten things out. I like to flip mine over at this time, pull that tail that you wove in nice and tight and give yourself a little scissor snip there. Trim that tail, that way it'll be out of your way, okay? So when we do a granny square, if we're sticking with the same color, we need to slip stitch over to the correct spot to start the new round, round two. If you're doing a new color, what you can do is simply cut the yarn and tie the new yarn into any corner space and proceed. But because we're sticking with the same color, we're going to make our entire square aqua. We're going to slip stitch over into that first stitch. I like to go in the back loops. It's a little bit more concealed if you do it that way. And what I mean by the back loops, if you're not familiar with that, if you look at the stitch, uh, you have your post. And then at the top is the stitch. And if, if you turn it towards you, you can see a V. Go into that back loop of that V. Okay, This is just a personal preference. Um, if you go into the back loops, it's a little bit um, more inconspicuous, I guess you could say. Okay, slip stitch, slip stitch. We're just slip stitching over to the correct spot here. And then I like to slip stitch into the corner space as well. And now you're in the correct space. You're in the corner space. So in our granny square, we have these corner spaces. And then later we're going to have some side spaces as well when our square gets a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's begin. You're going to chain three. One, two, three. Work two double crochets because that chain three counts as one of our double crochets. So for granny squares, you're always going to have these groups of three double crochets. When you do a chain three, it counts as one of them, okay? So we did our two double crochets, chain one, and in that same space, work three more double crochets. One, two, and three. Chain one, hop over to the next space, and we're gonna do the same thing. Three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet. So one, two, Three, get a little bit more yarn here, chain one, and three double crochets all in that same space. So one, two, and three. You can see we're starting to get a little bit of a square look already. Okay, so chain one, hop over to the next space and work your next corner. Three double crochet, one, two, and three, chain one, and three double crochet, one, two, and three, chain one, and now the last corner space of our square, we're going to work the same way, three double crochet, one, two, three, work that chain one, and three more double crochet. One, two, and three. Okay, one more chain one, and then we're gonna join where we started. Remember that chain three at the beginning? We're gonna count three chains up. One, two, three, join with a slip stitch, to close the round, okay? 
So round two is complete. Now you can remove your hook. I'm going to show you. If we kind of sharpen up these corners, you can see we have the nice beginning of a really pretty little granny square, okay? Now our next round is the round you'll repeat for the rest of your square as long, as large rather, as you'd like it to be. Um, and as your square grows, you're going to be adding more side spaces. So now we have corner, side, corner, side, corner. Now as your square grows, the next round will be corner, side, side, corner. And then the row after, or round after that will be corner, side, 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 corner, okay? So what we're going to do is, once again, because we're sticking with the same color, we need to slip stitch over to the correct spot. So we're going to slip stitch in each of these three double crochets to get us to the right spot. And then also I like to slip stitch into the space as well. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and work two double crochets. Whoops two double crochets into that corner space. One, two, three, chain one. We're working the, the corners will always be worked the same way no matter how many sides you're working. So to do that chain one and then three double crochet. One, two, and three, chain one. Now we're at a side, so the sides are just three double crochet, chain one. One, two, three, chain one. Okay, now we're going to hop over to a corner. That's three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet. So one, two, three, chain one and three double crochet. One, two, and three. So now you can kind of see the difference between the corner and the side and the corner, okay? So let's grab some more yarn here. And we're gonna work our next side. Three double crochet, chain one. One, two, three, chain one, work your next corner. Three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, and then in that same space, three more double crochet. Whoops, one, two, and three. Chain one. All right, we're about a little bit more than halfway through. So we're working a side now. Three double crochet. One, two, three, chain one. Work your corner. Three double crochet. One, two, three, chain one and three more double crochet. One, two, three. Okay, we're gonna work our last side, three double crochet. One, two, three, chain one. And then we're going to join one, two, three chains up with a slip stitch to close, okay? So this dishcloth, much like a lot of the dishcloths in our crochet along, is very customizable. So you could keep it little and make it a scrubby. Um, now when we go to do our polka dots, you do want to make, let me grab a couple of these, you do want to make your dishcloth large enough to accommodate all these really pretty uh, polka dots that we're doing, okay? But, um, you know, you can make it oversized, you can make it smaller, it's completely up to you. If you do want to make yours on the smaller side, you can just make smaller polka dots, okay? 
So go ahead and repeat round three over and over and over again until your square is as large as you would like it to be. If you're using the same yarn as me, you have more than enough yarn for the square. And I just wanted to point out for each round, like I mentioned before, you're going to be adding a side. So the row that we'll do next will be corner, side, side, corner, okay, and so forth. The, the round after that will be corner, side, 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 corner, and so forth, okay? So let's just keep repeating round three over and over until our dishcloth is as large as we would like it to be. So we'll rejoin in just a moment, and I'm going to show you how to crochet both the large, the medium, and the small polka dots. So you can really make it uh, any colors, any sizes, uh, and I'm, it's really fun to see because a lot of you get like to get really creative and do a variety of different colors and things for all of the projects really that we do. So stay tuned, we're gonna work on our squares, come back, learn how to do the polka dots next. Okay, just working that last round and I'm just gonna join with a slip stitch to close the round like we did for every round before this one. Now, mine is measuring about nine inches across, which is the size that I really love. If you want yours to be bigger and make it a nice oversized dishcloth, you can certainly make more rounds, as many as you like. Now, my nine inch, uh, with my personal tension, the hook I'm using, the yarn, now I know everybody kind of switches things up a little bit, but if you're using the same yarn, same hook, everything, I did eight rounds total, just if uh, you needed a frame of reference. Now, we are going to fasten off by cutting the yarn, wrap the yarn around the hook, pull it through, just give it a nice snug uh, tightening there. And I'm gonna go ahead and weave this end in just so it's out of the way. Now I already trimmed this one before. And we're gonna move on to the polka dots. Now I will say as a side note, this is a really, really pretty dishcloth all by itself. There is no beating, a uh, classic, beautiful, brightly colored granny square. There's just nothing quite like a granny square. So if you wanna just have a really pretty, simple, classic granny square, you could just stop right here. We're gonna add some fun polka dots to ours. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier in the video, I made some different sizes. Now, I talked about yellow yarn and orange yarn earlier in the video. But I also went ahead and added some pink. Now, I just kind of threw those in, but you know, it's totally up to you. You can do whatever you like. But I did want to add some pink because I just thought it, it just added a little bit of fun to my color scheme. So we have our polka dots here, and, and I like to kind of fiddle and sort of rearrange, and you'll probably rearrange them 10 times before you get them the way you like them. But Basically, these stitches here, the stitch counts rather, are all the same for all the polka dots. We just used a different stitch to get us the size. So what I mean by that is these pink, these pink polka dots here are single crochets, um, but the same number of stitches as this one over here that are half double crochets. And then this one over here that are double crochets. So we have single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. We're gonna make each one of these together and you'll start to see what I mean because we're, we're just doing the same thing. We're just applying a different stitch to it. We're going to start with this uh, pink yarn here and do our smallest little polka dot with the single crochet stitches. Now, if you want your polka dots to be all the same size, feel free. I love seeing what everyone is doing in our Ravelry group and on social media. Everybody kind of puts their own special uh, touch onto their dishcloths and that's really fun to see as well. So I just put a slip knot on our hook. We're going to start this very similarly to our granny square and let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here and we're going to chain four. This is going to seem very familiar because uh, it's the same way we started our square over here. So if you made the square first like I did this will seem very familiar and then what we're going to do is join with a slip stitch in the chain farthest from the hook to create our ring. Open it up a little bit, hold that tail along the edge. Now we're gonna chain one, and we're gonna work 11 single crochets into the center. So that chain one counted as one of our single crochets. So to do that, insert the hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. So that's one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we need a little bit more yarn. It's like tumbling around. Nine. Push those over if you need to. 10 and 11. So we'll have a total, because we counted that chain one as one of our single crochets, you'll have a total of 12, including that one. Okay, then you're gonna join that very first stitch, join with a slip stitch to close the round. Okay, just like that. Then we're going to chain one and work a single crochet in that very first stitch, that very first little hole or opening that you see, work a single crochet into that one. And then, let me just zoom in a hair more, there we go. In our next stitch, we're gonna work two single crochets. And we're gonna do this all the way around our little polka dot, okay? So work two single crochets in every stitch, all the way around our circle, okay? So this is going to be the same as our other polka dots, but we're just going to do a different stitch. It's the same number of stitches and counting, except this, just the stitch will change. So we are going to do them all together, but I just wanted to point out that it's very, very similar to some of these other ones, okay? And also, I can't wait to see what all of you choose for your polka dot colors. I kind of wanted to stick with this like bright, summery sort of theme here. Okay, so I'm just working those single crochets all the way around. And we're going to move on to our next polka dot in just a minute here. All right coming right around and you can see it's sort of looking like our other one. So we're going to end up with uh, three of each color. Okay. And what we're going to do now I'm at the end here, same thing we've been doing, join with a slip stitch to close the round. And we're going to leave the, the outer tail, now cut the yarn, fasten off, and we're going to leave this outer tail intact. Uh, because we're going to use that to seam it to our piece. Okay, now go ahead and take your center tail and just pull it really, really tight and give that tail a snip. Moving right along to our yellow medium-sized polka dot, we're going to do, like I said before, basically the same thing. Put a slip knot on your hook, and I'll go through this one a little quicker because it's just a different stitch, but we're going to be doing the same thing. So we're going to chain four, one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to join in the chain farthest from our hook with a slip stitch to create that ring. Okay, open up the ring a little bit, hold that tail along the edge as you work, and then you're going to chain two, one, two. So for this one, this medium sized circle is a half double crochet this time. Okay, so to make a half double crochet, let me just get a tiny bit more yarn here. To make a half double crochet, we're gonna wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops, okay? So we're gonna do 11 of those. So that was one, two, three, four, Five. I'm still holding that tail along the edge. And six, seven, pushing over as needed to give yourself some space. And then eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, so join to close the round with a slip stitch. So count two chains up and then join to close. 
just like that, okay? So now for round two, and I like to just tighten up that, uh, that tail you held along the edge, just tighten that up to close that hole a little bit. And we'll kind of straighten things out. Okay, so for round two, we're gonna chain two. One, two, and then work a half double crochet in that very first stitch. And then we're gonna work two half double crochets in each stitch all the way around. And um, so as you can see, it's very similar to what we did with the smaller circle, the pink circle. We're just doing the same thing, okay? So work two half double crochets in each stitch all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my stitches and then we'll rejoin in just a moment and we'll finish this circle up and uh, work on our final large circle, the one in orange. Okay, so keep working two half double crochets in each stitch all the way around. Okay, I completed my circle. Now we're gonna join with a slip stitch to close the round, just like that, okay? And our medium circle is complete. So all you need to do at this time is just uh, cut the yarn I'm trying to go underneath here. There we go. Cut the yarn and just fasten that off. Pull it nice and snug. And then we'll just set this one aside. So our final polka dot that we're going to be making is the orange. So I'm going to grab my orange. I love these three colors together. They're very summery. Actually four colors if you include the square. Okay, so here is our large circle. And again, same exact uh, thing we're going to be doing, but this time we're going to be doing it with the double crochet stitch, okay? So when we're done, we're going to have three dots of each color. We're slowly building our little uh, collection here. So grab the orange, and I'm going to get you started on this, and then we'll work through this one pretty quickly because we've already made two. It's just a different stitch. Okay, so chain four, same thing, one, two, three, and four. Join in the farthest chain from the hook with a slip stitch to create your ring. Now open that ring up nice and big, hold that tail along the edge. This time we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and we're gonna work 11 double crochets into the center of the ring. So wrap yarn around hook, insert into the center of the ring, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay, so that was one. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, pushing those over if you need to, nine, ten, and 11, okay? Now, you want to count three chains up this time, one, two, three, and join with a slip stitch to close the round, okay? Giving that uh, little tail a tug to close up the center there, okay? So next, what we're gonna do is, this is gonna seem very familiar, we're gonna chain three this time, and then work a double crochet into that very first stitch that you come to. And then we're gonna go around and work two double crochets in each stitch all the way around. Okay, so in that first stitch you come to, work two double crochet, one and two. Next stitch, work two double crochet. We're gonna do this all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead and work this round and then once again, we'll rejoin towards the end of this round. So the next step we're going to do is 
finish up this circle and then we're going to sew all these little dots onto our dishcloth. So it's going to start looking really, really pretty. We already have all the beautiful colors. So I'm going to continue around this round, around this round, that was a mouthful, and then we'll rejoin and put it all together. Okay, then we're just going to join one, two, three chains up with a slip stitch to close the round. Okay, and then grab our scissors and just cut the yarn, whoops, and fasten off. I don't know about you, but with fall right around the corner, this is looking like a cute little pumpkin to me. Okay, so all of our polka dots have been created. So what we wanna do first is if you've kind of been, let me zoom out so you can see all this a little bit better. So if you've been following along with these dots and just kind of setting them aside like I've been doing, um, you're going to have two tails at this point. You're going to have, if you flip it over, a center tail, the one you held along the edge, which we are going to trim off at this point. You can just go ahead and trim that. The outer edge tail that when you finished your circle, we're going to use to seam these on. So go ahead and take all these tails and go ahead, the centermost tail, go ahead and snip those off because we're going to not need those anymore. We're just going to, but I like to just give them a nice little tug before you do so, just so everything's nice and sharp looking. Okay, so all of these we just need to snip off. And then what we're going to do is grab our tapestry needle and we're going to start sewing these on. Now what we need to do first though is make sure uh, we have the placement the way we want them to be. Okay, so we do have a lot of dots that we're going to be fitting into this uh, square. Okay, so make sure, now you're probably going to move these around a million times, but just make sure that you get your dots kind of how you want them to go. Um, and make sure, so you see this this circle here, this is the front, the side that faced you while you worked, and then this is the back. So you can see it looks a little bit different, okay? Make sure all the right side, the side facing you as you made all these, is facing upward, okay? It will change the appearance uh, of your square if, you don't, if you're not mindful of that, I should say. Okay, so make sure they're facing up, and then just kind of play around with the placement of your dots. I went large to small because it's easier to kind of fit the little ones in at the end. Make sure they're all facing upward. If you're not sure, you can give them a flip. Make sure that they're all doing that. Now, my, none of mine are touching, but you could like uh, stack some of them. You could sort of overlap them like bubbles almost. All right, so once you get your placement, then you can start sewing, okay? So this looks really cute. Grab your tapestry needle, and then what you're gonna do is, um, let me spin this around, let's do this large one first. What you're gonna do is just thread your tapestry needle, just like that, and then we're gonna do the first one together. Now, this is like sort of on the edge, and you can see that knot is sort of, let me get it over on the white background. It's sort of making like a, a point, which we don't want. So before you go ahead and sew it to the piece, flip it over and then take it into a couple of those stitches a little ways uh, just to eliminate that that little point where you made the knot and see when you when you pull it in like that it, it sort of uh, snugs that knot up a little bit closer okay so then what you want to do is go ahead and sew your polka dot to the dishcloth okay so let's do the first one together and then we'll kind of switch gears and sort of go off on our own and sew. And then when we return, we'll tackle some of this finish work, okay? So let's get this first one sewn together. And all you're going to do, I'm just holding it in place without letting the other ones fall, but I mean, if you want to hold it up and sort of reposition them again, feel free to do that. So just kind of go through here. And so now your dishcloth, because we're sewing these on, the back of your dishcloth is going to look very much like you sewed something on. So there will be a definite front and back to this one. Some of the other dishcloths we've done have been um, 
reversible. This one is not as reversible. There's, there's a definite front and back to this. Now as you're sewing, you want to just sort of straighten things out and make sure it's laying nice and flat. And I've dropped my needle here. And just kind of go around, make sure it's looking nice and neat. Okay, now we're sort of at the beginning, which is a good, a good thing because I'm running out of uh, tail here to use. Okay, so let's get that last stitch in, and then we're going to make sure you end by going to the back of your work here. Whoops, keep dropping my tail just because it's getting pretty short. My advice is when you make these dots, make your tail nice and long. Some of mine are really long. Some of mine, uh, such as this one, were a little shorter. Okay, so take it to the back, and then what you're going to do is, mine keeps falling, Go around one of these loops here in the back and just take your tail through to create a knot and then you can go right back in. Now if it's getting too short, here's a little tip, thread, uh, insert the needle in first and then thread it. Okay, So it's okay if it gets short, you can still sort of uh, finagle it here. So go ahead and insert the needle in first, my tail is super short, and then thread it and then you'll be able to pull it through. So I, I've created this nice little knot and then to weave it in because it's gotten really short, now some of these other ones are long and I'm not going to have that problem, but this one, the one I happen to pick is totally short. Okay, and then we're just going to weave that end in. Okay, so just kind of bring that through there and then we're going to flip this over and get it all straightened out. Make sure it's nice and flat. If you pull too tight, it's going to distort your circles. So just make sure they're nice and neat and flat, okay? So then what you want to do is repeat for the rest of your circles, and then we're going to rejoin and kind of work on the finish work a little bit. Now I wove this end in, so as a side note, I can go ahead and snip that now. Okay, so let's finish up sewing all the circles, and we'll rejoin in just a moment. Okay, so my tapestry needle has been very busy sewing all these little dots on. Now, if you want to, we did three of each color. You could go and make, you know, some more and just really fill them in. Um, but I really like it, and I am happy with the way it turned out. I am super excited to see all of the color combinations that you choose. It's been really fun to look on uh, social media and our Ravelry group just to see all the different color combinations. And I know a lot of you have been really trying to use what's in your stash, so that's really fun. So that is how you crochet the Connect the Dots dishcloth. And I wanted to also mention that we have a Ravelry group where you can share your work, you can share photos, and also be sure and use the hashtag FiberFluxCal and I'll put that above to uh, share your work on social media. And I'll also put the link to the Ravelry group down below. It's a really wonderful resource and a place to kind of hang out with other makers working on the crochet alongs. So the Connect the Dots dishcloth. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.